Hey Google, show me the current traffic. I've got a problem. Every morning I wake up and immediately I'm in a rush to get out the door. Usually I barely have time to make coffee or eat breakfast. I'm in such a rush that I never even check my phone and then I get halfway to work and bam, I hit traffic. This is the worst feeling ever. Now to fix this, what I should do is wake up earlier, but that's not an option. My other idea is to build a new coffee table which has a secret twist. I want this coffee table to show me live traffic data without ever needing to use my phone because everyone keeps telling me phones are bad for you or something like that. To start building this table, I cleared off my CNC router so I could carve the roadmap. Got a nice fresh sheet of plywood. To hold the wood in place, I used a couple staples. I just eyeballed these locations and prayed that the end mill wouldn't hit them. The end mill I'm using is an eighth inch down cut bit. This should give me nice clean edges on the cut and hopefully reduce sanding later. The map that I'm cutting here is all of the major roadways in my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio. I started off with a picture of the road so I could import it into my CAD program and trace everything with splines. This took literally forever and honestly my hand hurt so bad after doing all this. Maybe I'll have carpal tunnel in the future or something, let's hope not. Looking back there was definitely way better ways of doing this. But this way did technically work. Now Cincinnati is known for a couple things. Chili, beer, and its location right on the Ohio River. Oh, and Harambe, I forgot about that one. Anyway, the river is really important so I had to include it on the map. The river gets cut a bit deeper into the wood, which should make it stand out from the roads. To display the major highways on this map, I actually turned to 3D printing. I fired up my Orange Storm Giga printer, which has a huge build volume. Using some transparent PLA, I printed out the entire highway system almost entirely in one piece. This print was absolutely huge and took up almost the entire 800 by 800 millimeter bed. Each of the roads in this outline has two channels, one for each direction of traffic. Each of these channels gets filled with an LED strip which can be illuminated to show different road conditions. This process was pretty tedious because I needed to install over 30 feet of LED strip and each one needed to be carefully soldered in place. Before the LED highway outlines can get added to the map, I need to do some finishing work. I added a coat of polyurethane to the wood to help seal everything up, and then I just used a small brush and some paint to paint all of the roads black. My hope is that this paint will make the roads really pop against the wood, but wow, did this take forever. This seriously took a couple nights of me just painting for several hours. Luckily though, I was able to flip on the TV and just kind of relax while I was doing this, so it wasn't that bad. And you may notice that while I was painting this, I didn't really do a good job of staying within the street lines. But this is okay. Since I urethaned the wood prior to painting it, none of the paint really soaked in, which means I can just sand it off. After a couple rounds of sanding, this map was starting to look really good, and I was definitely getting excited about this project. For the river, I wanted to try something new, so I actually grabbed some 3D printing resin, which is this really vibrant blue color. Using a syringe, I carefully filled each of the waterways with this blue resin. Since this resin is UV sensitive, all I needed to do to cure all of this was just roll it out into the sunlight. This curing happens shockingly fast. It probably only takes five to 10 seconds. It actually cures so fast that the resin shrinks and pulls away from the sidewalls a little bit. Fixing this is fairly easy and you can just use a syringe to put a little more resin into all the gaps. The quick curing of the resin definitely added a little bit of shape to the river which isn't a bad thing, but if I wanted to avoid that in the future, a UV flashlight might be a better option than using the sun. Moment of truth here. Time to install our 3D printed highway map onto the wood painted map. The 3D printed highway outline fits very snugly into some channels cut into the map. It definitely took a bit of persuading to get everything to fit in correctly, but eventually I got everything in place and held it together with just a little bit of super glue. If I was gonna do this again, I'd definitely make the channels a little bit wider all of that paint I added definitely made this fit a little bit too tight. All of the LEDs in this thing needed to get wired together, which I quickly realized was gonna be a really tedious task. 
This is gonna take forever. At this point, each step in this project taking forever was becoming a theme. Regardless, sitting down and working on stuff like this is how I relax, so I didn't really mind. And I mean, come on, there's definitely no way that the next step is even more tedious and takes even longer, right? All right, so here's the setup I got going on here. I've got the map here. As you can see, there's one LED lit up and I've rigged up a quick Python script. So when I enter in a new number here, it changes which LED is lit up. So now all I need to do is go one by one for all 216 LEDs and record their GPS locations on the map. This is gonna take so long. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this was a rough one. It's hard to make this process look glamorous. I had to just sit down with an appropriate beverage, of course, and just grind through this. Now, the reason I'm recording all these GPS locations is because I wanna pull the data from a service called TomTom. Tom. This API lets you get live traffic data using just a latitude and a longitude. And the best part is you get 50,000 free requests per day, or at least that's what I thought. All right, all right, we're in full panic mode here. This, this could wreck the project. Now, typically for APIs, they want you to pay money, but this API gives you free non-tile request every day, but it only says 2,500. I swear this number used to be 50,000. Getting data for each LED position counts as a request. So with 216 LEDs, I can only update the table like 11 times per day, and that's not gonna work. However, it looks like you still get 50,000 free tile requests. So I need to figure out how to use that. These tiles are the same thing as the overlay you see in something like Google Maps on your phone. My new plan is by pulling 48 of these tile images, I can stitch them all together and get a full traffic map of the city. Then I can just pull the 216 different LED colors off of this image. This means I can update the table over 1400 times per day, which is a lot better than 11. But this means I have to remap all the coordinates from latitude and longitude to pixel coordinates. At this point in the project, I think I had pretty much completely lost it. You know that feeling where you just wanna go build something? You're just tired of looking at a computer screen? That was me right here. So it was a very welcome relief when I finished putting in all the data and could get back to the woodworking part of this project. So I cut down some wood and then added channels to it. One for the glass, one for the table itself, and then one for a bottom piece of plywood, which will cover up all the wiring. All these border pieces are gonna to join together with miter joints. So I used a chop saw to cut them down and I made sure to take my time because these are gonna be very visible and there's nothing worse than a miter joint that doesn't line up. Now I can't actually add these to the table right away because the 3D printed roadmap actually interferes with these borders. So to fix that, I traced the area where the parts contacted and then used a router to remove that wood. To attach these border pieces to the table, I just used some glue and brad nails. And again, I took my time here and used some tape on the corners to make these joints as clean as possible. I gave everything a quick sand with a rough 120 grit, and this thing was really starting to take some shape. Personally, I prefer the look of a chamfer over a fillet. So I used a trim router to bevel all the edges, which I think gives it a really modern look. Now, unfortunately, the brad nails on the outside of this table definitely stand out. So I used some putty to fill in those holes. Then I gave the entire table a finished sand at 220 grit and wiped it down to get rid of all the dust. Finishing this, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So I just sprayed on some polyurethane and I did a couple coats just to make sure everything was even and looked good. To control this entire table, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. This will pull all the traffic data from the cloud and update the table every 60 seconds. Some other auxiliary electronics were also needed, such as voltage regulators and some wiring that lets me power this thing from a battery or from a power converter that's plugged into the wall. I also added in some buttons just so I could control different modes of this table and also some USB ports so I could charge my phone and make this thing as usable as possible. All these electronics are housed in this nice 3D printed box and it'll sit on the bottom of the table out of sight. Also on the other side of the table, I drilled some holes and added threaded inserts. The bottom piece of plywood gets added to cover everything up, and this thing is really taking shape. Now it's time for the legs. The table legs just attach using some bolts and those threaded inserts we added earlier, which makes this thing super easy to disassemble when it needs to be moved. And finally, the last step is adding the glass on top. I'll admit it, this project is a little bit of a roller coaster, but finally, we are left with a truly unique coffee table. Mm -hmm. 
while I was programming this table, I created six different modes. The first mode is obviously the live traffic, and this one is definitely my favorite. The data updates every minute, and if you pull up the traffic on your phone and compare it to the table, it's actually shockingly close. The second mode is for when you want a little less color and just a nice white glow. This is simple, but I think looks really nice. The third mode is very similar and just uses an animation to illuminate all the roads, and then slowly they all go out as well. The fourth mode is probably my second favorite, and it uses a different color to highlight each of the major highways. There's also this fun animation that looks like there's traffic moving as well. This one's great for when people are trying to identify which road is which and where locations are in the city. The fifth mode is also pretty simple, and it's just an RGB mode that moves through all the different hues. This is like your classic RGB gamer look. You gotta love it. And last but not least, the sixth mode is basically just a screensaver. A single dot moves along the road just to let you know the table is on, but it's not distracting at all. Having all these different modes definitely makes the table a lot more usable and a little less obnoxious, since looking at a giant traffic map can get a little old. And honestly, I think the table looks pretty cool turned off as well. Regardless, I had a ton of fun building this project and it turned out awesome. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. That's all for this project though, so subscribe for more like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.